It's May the 4th, Star Wars Day, and the final episode of Clone Wars just dropped on Disney+. Plus. So today I'm gonna give you my thoughts on season seven of the Clone Wars, as well as the series in general. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies, TV, and nerdy stuff way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your take on Season 7, as well as the series in general. This is a spoiler review, so I'm going to be going into details, so you can go into details down below in the comment section. You don't need to worry about posting a spoiler warning. Also, as it is May the 4th be with you day, over on my Patreon page, I just posted a video with my favorite moment from each of the films in the Skywalker saga. So whether it's a moment, an element, the thing that I love most about each of the episodes, over on my Patreon page, join at any level and you can unlock that. The link is down below in the description. And let's get started talking about the Clone Wars. And I'll kick things off by just giving you my general impressions of the series. So it debuted when I was in my late 20s and I didn't have whatever cable channel it was on. So I didn't see it when it kind of first came out. Um, I first started watching it about five, six years ago. Whenever it dropped on Netflix, I just kind of binged through it or I didn't really binge it. I watched it over a series of months. And the first couple of seasons, I'm not the biggest fan of because it's just a lot of people getting stranded on a planet and being rescued. And then as it got into the later seasons, it started to dive more into some backstory, mythology, expanding the universe. And that's the stuff that was always a little bit more interesting to me. But to that point, I think there's always been a limitation of this show in that it takes place essentially between the end of Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. And so all the characters that we already knew before the series started, we know where they end up. Like we know what happens to Obi-Wan, Anakin, Yoda. And so that's kind of predetermined. And so that removes a certain amount of tension of are they in danger? And then when it comes to all these new characters they introduce us to, we don't see them in... Uh, the original trilogy and so there's a certain sense in which some of them either aren't consequential or we know they're going to be killed off or that this is kind of in so it kind of also kind of predetermines where things are going to land in a certain sense and then also because we'd already seen um episode three revenge of the sith we also knew that this whole thing was a ruse. It wasn't a real war about real things. It was something manufactured by someone manipulating all the different sides. So the specific war itself, the Clone Wars, isn't very interesting because it's just kind of a charade uh, that led to something. It was used for somewhat one individual's political purposes, but you can't really get all that invested in the war itself because it's not like you're backing the troop, uh, the clone troopers winning because and you know where that ends up. And of course, you don't want the separatists and the droids to win either because they're also being run by the same person. So especially those first two seasons where it was just a whole lot of the actual war and... Oh no, Padme's been kidnapped again. We gotta go rescue her. That stuff never really connected with me all that much. So always the best elements of the show were when we're seeing something we've never been able to see in the in uh, Star Wars before. It's been explored in books, but it hasn't been shown before in the films. And so kind of when you kind of go into Darth Maul and his past, his family, his planet, all that, that gets really interesting to me. When you start actually showing them training young uh, Padawans, Jedi, and they're going after their kyber crystals, that's kyber crystals. That started getting interesting me to me. And then, more importantly, as we moved into season seven, where things started to fill in the gaps on things that we have seen, that's the best stuff to me. So to give you my general impression of it, from my memories of watching the previous seasons, my favorite, the one that stuck out the most to me is season seven. It is my favorite season. And to that point also, this last couple of arcs, probably some of my favorite arcs, because one of my favorite things that they were able to do is show us the world of Star Wars, not just big gigantic battles on weird planets where bat droids and clones are shooting each other. Like what's going on in the underworld of Coruscant? Like what is the general population thinking about this war and the Jedi? And they introduce some of these characters that when the show previously ended, you're like, okay, so are all these hero clone troopers, psychopaths and rebels addressed some of that. But um, this would actually 
played this out. What, what happened to Rex? Likewise, we saw Ahsoka Tano disappear in the earlier stuff, but what happened to her when everything went down? And that's something you kind of really need an answer to with a series like this. And so finally, we, we got kind of resolution on all of that. But because this season really was, especially at the end, parallel to Revenge of the Sith, you could feel the consequence of it. It mattered. It played into something. It wasn't just a planet I hadn't heard of before, some adventure taking place, and then we leave it. Like, I know these characters that are playing into it. As you have certain conversations where you see a scene that was actually in Revenge of the Sith, one of these Jedi Council meetings, and where the scene cut in the movie, it ends, and then Ahsoka Tano walks in, and you absolutely feel the arrogance of the Jedi. Like, Mace Windu is just like, well, you're a civilian. And because he treats her that way, she doesn't say information that could have maybe stopped some of this. That's where you go, oh, you feel it. And it touches on some of the, the, the good aspects that I don't think Lucas in the films himself did a particularly good job of, of which was how did this fall apart? Like, how did the Jedi, we've been told they're amazing peacekeepers, so wise. So how did they all get duped? And the Clone Wars, especially as we're seeing it right here, you see how they lost track of their mission. And that other side to it that even in some ways makes Last Jedi a little bit better in Luke's, um, you know, disillusionment. You go, OK, we're, we're seeing how all the pieces fit together a little bit of the arrogance of what they were doing, even though they were the good guys in a certain sense. They were trying to do the right thing, but they lost something in the process. They weren't thinking about the regular people, even, um, you know, a little moment. Uh, I think it was episode nine, episode 10, somewhere in there where you have Obi-Wan, like, we have to go rescue Palpatine, and Ahsoka Tano, like, calls him out on, like, these are the people, and you're going after him, and you have that moment where you, that fills in this gap of how the Jedi failed so bad, and it crumbled so hard, so fast. That's the best stuff for me about this show, that it, it, that stuff. Um, when you can really feel the connective tissue to everything, not just these kind of isolated stories where some of it, just, like watching season one and two, it doesn't really even feel like I'm watching something that is in continuity because it's just so many of these big flashy battles and rescue missions and stuff that there's just a disconnect there, especially like the, the, um, the movie that was the precursor to the series that was really the first four episodes edited together, like you're seeing this weird... Jabba's nephew and the guys with accents and stuff. It just, it felt like a kitty cartoon rather than a real piece of important piece of the Star Wars canon. And which one of the things that's been interesting to me about the way some of this has played out is that my perspective, that first movie is the worst thing about Clone Wars. And this last little bit is the best part. So it really did just kind of get better as it went along and ended on a very high note with a lot of this stuff. So that's a whole bunch of thoughts, um, kind of walking through it on, on or, or disorganized, kind of walking through the main three arcs of the season. The first one, the Bad Batch. Um, since I, I haven't been as invested in the war side to it, that uh, that was my least, the part that was least interesting to me, but still, I, I like the fact that it, they're paying attention to things that happened before, tying it together, expanding mythology. mythology. So still very good episodes, um, especially I watched season one and rewatched those two. And then I watched um, that one and I was like, OK, I, I like this way more than what they were doing at the beginning of the series. And then it moves on to the Ahsoka Tano plot line. And that's where it really picked up to me of where, where's what's she been up to? And you kind of have her on this kind of what side quest at first it feels like inconsequential. And then you start hearing their perspectives and what happened to these girls' parents. And you you realize that like this really matters. This resolves a, pl a plot hole in this whole deal of why on earth, like, you know why the clones turned on the Jedi but why didn't everyone else immediately go, no, what are you guys doing? Like, why are we turning on these people? And you start to go, oh, the perception of them was so wildly different. And they had lost touch with that, that to themselves, they were the peacekeepers. To everyone else, they were these warmongers that were stretching out this weird war and causing destruction without concern for what was happening. And you went, oh, OK, that that makes a lot of sense. 
And then that led it into kind of the final little arc um, where you get closes out some of the Mandalore plot lines that they put in place before. And then Darth Maul plays back into it and you just get the stuff that they, they keep elevating the Maul character where you have him as this person that is behaving very much like a Dark Force user of he's trying to get someone to side with him so that very much like Vader, very much like Kylo, he's like, like, you team up with me and we can take out the bad guy. He's going to go destroy the universe. We can take him out and we can rule. And it puts, like, gives his character so much the strength of those characters as well as that weakness of just such a desire for power and not realizing he's doing the same thing that every single one of them had done before. And I guess Sidious was actually successful at doing it. Um, and that makes him more interesting and, you know, informs her like she he tells her like it's Skywalker. He's the one that's going to turn and just like great little moment. And then the next to last episode is probably my favorite episode of the entire series. The Order 66 episode where you feel all of it. And I, I mentioned some of this stuff before, but when you have Ahsoka Tano talking with the Jedi and you just feel that disconnect of like she just she just sees that something's wrong with what they're doing and they don't trust her in because things aren't said like this is conversation right here. If she had said, I just talked to Darth Maul and he just told me this whole time he's been manipulating the whole thing. It is Palpatine, it is Sidious and Skywalker is the person he's been grooming. All your fears, that is happening. That is happening. Suddenly all that, the way that scene plays out with Mace and a couple other Jedi going with Anakin doesn't happen. <laughs> There's this moment where everything could have happened differently, but she doesn't say it. And you don't blame her in this moment after what Mace just said and did. He chose not to act in a trusting manner. Therefore, she couldn't trust him back. And that's a good use. It's an earned moment of communication is so much the fault of what happened and um, tr actual trust issues, the way people really interact. And this isn't a children's cartoon or children's cartoon. Obviously, I'm a grown man and many of you are also grown men watching these college students. Um, but, you know, something that's aimed so that my eight year old can watch it with me and love it. But it has this depth so that there's stuff for people that are older. Once again, going back to why I think these later seasons much stronger than the first couple of seasons. And I keep referencing the first two because I did rewatch those this year and I haven't watched three, four, five, six yet. I haven't been able to rewatch those seasons yet. So they're not as fresh on my mind to talk about specifics. And, uh, but yeah, the part where Order 66 happens and she frees Maul, not even as this like, I'm trying to rescue or save you. It's like, she's just desperate. And she goes, I know the one thing that can save me. I'll let this monster loose. And, and, it, and it works. And it leads us to the finale itself. And I, uh, for a series that I wasn't as invested in, I, I wish they could have given us a little bit more. I think there's a few, you watch something like this and they decide to close out on very clearly Rex, Sokotano, these are our new characters that we don't know where they ended up. So we want to see kind of how their experience with the Close War, Clone Wars closes out. And obviously we saw them return in Rebels, but I, I think a little bit more of a hint as to where they went. Not just this kind of drops the lightsaber and, you know, disillusioned. Not just that, but would have liked to see more. And... um some epilogue scene, some a little bit of a flavor for what's in that gap that where did she go off to? I would have preferred that. Um, but really nice touch to kind of close out. Vader shows up and it's not not this big, fanciful scene, big and flashy. It's just Vader finds her like knows what's going on and it closes out as like the tragedy that is his arc that is so much very much at the center of the Clone Wars, um, while at the same time not being the focus of the show in, in, in another sense, since that's what the movies were for. So there you have it. There's a whole bunch of my thoughts on Clone Wars season seven, as well as the series in general. 
Remember, over on my Patreon page, I have another Star Wars video with my favorite moment from each of the movies in the Skywalker saga. Join at any level, and you can unlock that link down below in the description. Share your thoughts on it. Be sure to spoil away all you want. And once again, I really enjoyed this season and keep talking movies and TV too much.